Italian cultural heritage. Today we are going to talk about the film The Tree of the Wooden Clogs in Italiano, L'Albero degli Zoccoli. The reason for the title will become apparent at the end of the movie. The film was shot in 1978 and it's important to know where it was shot because it has very heavy bearing on the film itself. I circled the town of Bergamo, which is the main town in the region where the film was shot, and here more or less uh, the general area where the film took place. It's uh, a very fertile agricultural area. It is part of Italy's largest uh, uh, plain agricultural region, and it is one of the most productive uh, in the world due to geological reasons. It is surrounded by the Alps, as you can see, and here I am marking the city of Como where I was born and raised, so very close as you can see to Bergamo, and here again the continuation of the boundaries that is represented by the Alps. The distance between Como and Bergamo is probably, what, 50 miles? In Bergamo, I was in the service for one year, and my sister lives just a little far north of Bergamo, and uh, I do not understand a word of the local dialect. Bergamasco notoriously is one of the hardest, least comprehensible dialects for all the rest of Italians. The film, however, was shot in the plains, which is south of Bergamo, and it is, the dialect is similar to the dialect of the area that I'm representing with a triangle, where my family's father and mother came from originally. Then they moved to Como when they got married. The film came out in 1978, and I remember watching it for the first time with my grandmother, who was born in 1901, and who died when she was 95 or something like this, and also with my mother, who was born in 1930. And it was amazing to me how both of them remembered the same things. For my mother, it was the first 10 years of her life between 1930 and 1940, World War II. So she saw that as a child. The memories of my grandmother went back to the beginning of the century, and yet they both saw the same society. Very, very little change taking place in the working condition, the living condition of the poor. The poor were the huge mass of the people. Consider that by this time, Italy still had probably close to 85-90% people working in agriculture. This is very much the background, the subtext of Italian culture, the life of peasants from which everybody came. The subtext of American culture is immigration. Everybody came from another place. The subtext of Italian culture is we all stayed in the same place for centuries and centuries and centuries, and our roots are in the land. And yet, despite this, there are basically no films and very few artistic accounts, novels, for instance, that deal with the life of the simple people. Italian literature deals with a lot of themes, but very few of them have the poor people at the core. And when it comes to film, even less. That's why when this came out in 1978, it generated such an incredible interest because a lot of people could remember seeing the very things. A lot of people were told about what they could see in this film, 
the parents or grandparents had narrated the, the stories of the life of these people. We heard the stories and we could imagine through oral history, but yet nobody had ever seen the representation of those things. Now, if you drive through the countryside in northern Italy, you will see the structures, the farm, the farmhouses, which are still there. Some of them uh, in a state of abandon. Some of them have been refurbished, restored. So the fabric of society is still existent, but it's what was going on inside of those farmhouses and who lived there and how that is something that it's a memory that has been lost. I know a lot about that past because uh, my grandmother told me all the stories and my mother told me all the stories. So when we sat around uh, watching this film, I remember my, uh, my grandmother, for instance, noticed that there is a scene where uh, the peasants are plowing the fields and they're using horses and she said, no way. Nobody used horses to plow the fields. They're too rambunctious. They're too fast. You need a pair of oxen. So that was a detail. Why didn't they use oxen and they used horses? Most likely because they couldn't find oxen anymore. I don't think there is a place in Italy now where they still use oxen. They still have oxen. For what purpose? Oxen were used for transportation of very heavy loads, agricultural loads, and they were the sturdiest animals you could possibly imagine. And that's what you need for plowing. But enough with my memories uh, the, that are actually my mother's memories and my grandmother's memories. The film focuses on the life of one family inside the compound. They are poor, they are um, sharecroppers, and uh, bad things happen to them. And that's the way life was. A notion that I had forgotten but that came back to me is that there is an aspect of religiosity or religion or faith. And one of the things that really struck me is the emphasis on purgatory. There was no delusion that you would die and go to heaven. You would go to purgatory because by default, nobody is perfect and only perfect people, only the saintly go to heaven. Going to heaven is like winning the lottery. Everybody else, because we are imperfect, because there is this notion of sinning Sinning mean, means to miss mass, not to say your prayers at night, to curse once, twice, three times, to drink too much wine, to disobey your parents, to maltreat your spouse. Everything is sin. You go to confession, you confess, you are absolved, and you can have communion. But the sins are still recorded in your rap sheet. They don't go away. When you die, they bring up all the sins and be based on them, you are going to send to purgatory uh, to serve your sentence, basically. This is what people believed. This is what the church told them. The absolution in the confession is temporary. You still have to pay for your sin afterward. No chance that you're going to go to paradise directly. You will have to make a stop in purgatory. So in this film we have a snapshot at an immutable lifestyle. The only one who's going to get out of it is the little child because the church will take care of him. Otherwise this is a state, a permanent state of deprivation and poverty. In a way, it is similar to the period of the Great Depression in America, with the difference that was temporary despair. And maybe the despair was accentuated by the fact that 
it was temporary and there was the hope of getting it over. Here there is no despair. It's a statement of fact. It's a description of this is the way it is and it's not going to change. So better get used to it. The history of the Great Depression in America is the history of people that had lost hope in the future and they were dispossessed. Well, that was very much the condition of these Italian peasants for centuries, forever, at least until World War II. Now, what is interesting to observe is that in America, that particular period was heavily covered by writers and also by filmmakers. And I can think of a couple of important, uh, more, but at least a couple of important uh, uh, writings. John Steinbeck's uh, uh, Grapes of Wrath and Of Mice and Men. Both of them were turned into movies immediately. There is one movie that was made much later in the 60s, 70s, and it's, to my money, the most incredibly depressing movie ever created. It's total hopelessness, and it's called They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Also based on a novel that had been written afterwards, looking back at the Depression. So, the last point, again, this is the life of these people, of Italian North people in the north, where supposedly uh, the country was wealthier and uh, had more resources than anywhere else in the country. This is the life of 90% of the people through two millennia of existence. Little, few little things changed throughout this period for the poor people. And this is really the substratum, the underground, the subtext of Italian culture.